And welcome to the third episode of OMG JK. My name is Jason Kincaid. And I'm MG Siegler. Thank you all for joining us this week. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, so the first topic to discuss is the launch of YouTube's new HTML5 based web app. Right. Uh, and so the story here is that not only did YouTube launch a pretty impressive web app, but it's actually better in some respects than the native iPhone application, and it's certainly better than the, uh, the native Android app. Right, so this is entirely mobile web-based, all HTML5, has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the native application whatsoever. Right, and, and in fact, it actually sports uh, over 3G, it's got better video quality, and it's snappier. And the reason why is one of the YouTube engineers explained, Apple has actually, believe it or not, Apple is, well, it's pretty easy to believe actually, but Apple basically controls the YouTube native iPhone application. YouTube isn't too directly involved, it sounds right. like they help out. Uh, and Apple has kind of fallen behind when it comes to keeping up with the streaming oh, standards. Sh shocking that yeah. they don't want to uh, help out the YouTube app. So, but the, the bigger story here isn't just that the app is better, uh, but it's sort of part of Google's over, overall strategy to move away from native apps and towards web apps. Right. Um, yeah, but I mean, isn't that kind of, they're like wishy-washy on this subject. You know, part of the time they seem to want to do native apps, obviously with Android, that's what Android is, and then part of the time they want to do this HTML5 huge push. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they can fully commit, you know, to doing either one yet, and if they don't do that, it, I mean, it really you're hampers absolutely, You're the, absolutely right. The I think, I think uh, this is clear in a, a couple other cases, you've got Chrome OS versus Android, right. or it's, it's native versus web-based. Uh, but one interesting challenge, and I, I agree with your point, uh, if, if Google's trying to get all these iPhone users to use a web app, it's actually really interesting. If you visit YouTube from your iPhone 4, you see a little pop-up asking you to add it as a, onto your home screen as a, as a bookmark. Mm -hmm. uh, Google's basically going to be fighting a fight, fighting a fight, trying to get people to, to, use, to migrate to web apps after they spent years uh, being told there's an app for that on the App Store. I think it's going to be tough. Yeah, so basically they're, they're trying to get all these iPhone users to use this app so then they're not tied into the iPhone. They don't have to use the, right. the native applications there. But I still just, I mean, I think that they should commit to one, one side or the other and just go for it. I mean, a lot of people say that, that Android's going to be, you know, the, the way of the future and Chrome OS, just because it's not out yet, is kind of like, you know, an afterthought right now. Mm -hmm. But Chrome OS is much more in line with that idea of the, of the web is the future of everything. Right. I think... I think the web-based stuff is more, you know, five years from now, whereas Android is probably the next three, four years. Yeah, it's Although, just like if they, you know, if they get people locked into this, you know, this idea of doing native applications with Android, I mean, you yeah. know, who's to say what happens? Okay, uh, next story is Google investing in Zanga. So this is obviously a huge, huge deal. I mean, p partly because it was completely kept secret by mm -hmm. Google. It was part of an investment a, a round of investments weighed a little while ago. I think it was like a month or two ago. A month yeah. or two ago, uh, you know, tacked onto another thing. But this is supposedly over a hundred million dollars that they right. invested in this, and this is a you know direct shot right at Facebook. Yeah, I mean, I think this stands to be very major, assuming Google can pull it off. Their social, their history with social applications, and obviously this is going to be one of them, uh, isn't so hot, uh, and right. I think it's really going to play into Google Me, which is the rumored social network, right. which. You know, I'm sure they're hoping it's going to do well, but it's going to be tough. Well, we, yeah, we still don't know anything about that. But I mean, there was, so the talk of this, of this investment, which you know, was a TechCrunch story about this, was that it's also Zynga wants to build games for, for Google. Right. That's what, it, that's what the key to all this investment is. Right. Well, I'm sure they'll be porting their, their famous apps right. over. But I, I think the, the toughest part of this is getting all of these users who are associating Zynga games with Facebook to understand that they can access the same games from Google. Right, well they already have like, they have farmville.com, right? right? But that still works with Facebook Connect. It's like people log in through their Facebook Connect account and then mm -hmm. they do it that way. So this would obviously have to be different. I mean, maybe Google would implement Facebook Connect, but probably not, right? I think it'll probably play more into Zynga Live. Yeah. Maybe if there's a way for Zynga players to, to port their data from a Facebook account to a Zynga Live account and then over to Google. Don't you think though, I mean, obviously for Google social thing, won't they want people to use Google profiles? I'm sure they'd love it, but Google profiles have been so weak right now, I think I think we'll take what they can Yeah, get. it has been, but I mean, I would bet that that's like a big thing that they're trying to push with this. You know, they want, they want a stream of data on that, you know, profile, that Google profile that shows like, oh, Jason just bought so-and-so yams or, you know, whatever people mm. do in Farmville. Yeah, I mean, I think it obviously remains to be seen. Right now, Google Profiles has been, I can't believe they still look the way they do. Like, you get there, <laughs> and it's a photo and a link to your homepage and maybe, like, your, your home cities. Right. It's, 
And they still have the problem where they, you know, we talked about this, I think, last week with the vanity URLs. Where that's so the you're showing everyone that, where your email address is. That's your email address, so, right. which is just great. Yeah, so that's kind of ridiculous. Okay, and to, moving on to, to our next topic, uh, Android App Inventor. So the story here is you've got this new programming language. It's actually based on Scratch, which has been around for a while. It's an educational programming language mm -hmm. where you're dragging and dropping bits of code. Right. And the idea is that you're, you're allowing people who aren't necessarily professional developers to build their own customized apps. And I know you've taken, I don't know if I'd say you've taken an issue with this, but you pointed out how this could lead to a, an issue with Android market. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like the same idea that happened with HTML all the, all the years ago. Not HTML5, actual HTML, you know, mm -hmm. where everyone was decided they wanted to build a website. But it was pretty relatively hard to do. You need to know HTML, which isn't a hard language, but it's still a language that you would need to learn and, you know, learn CSS and all these different things. But even, well, actually, even before CSS, they were, you know, people were building websites with HTML, but you still need to know the code. But then tools came in, you know, obviously GeoCities launched, and they had, like, the what you see is what you get, the WYSIWYG editors, mm -hmm. and Dreamweaver, and things like that, that people were using and kind of creating these piece of shit sites. It's a ton of crap. Right. It just, <laughs> you know, it would have completely overrun the web, I think, except for things like Google came up and made it very easy to find great web pages. The mm -hmm. problem that Android has, obviously, is they, we talked about this last week, too, they don't have a good store to surface the best applications. Yeah. So to that point, given that Google figured out, you know, sort of how to surface the best app, the best links on the web. Right. I'm pretty confident they'll eventually be able to to figure out the best apps on Android market. It just doesn't seem like they're trying that hard. Yeah, yet. why are they not trying? I mean, so now they have 100,000 apps, right? On right. There? I mean, that's a ton of apps. It's, you know, it's like half of what Google, uh, Apple has and they're catching up. I mean, they're they're accelerating quicker. Right. But uh, and as far as the spam goes though, I think there will be a big influx of, of applications created by novice users who don't really know what they're doing, and they'll be spammy. But I don't think it's really going to make a, a much bigger problem than there already is. I think the vast majority of apps already are spammy. Right. So it's really a matter of dealing with a lot of spam versus you know, a ton of spam. Yeah, and that, <laughs> I, well, I mean, and I think the the good point about this, you know, that we talked about a little bit in our post on it, is that. Obviously, this can uh, usher in a whole new era of kind of app developers, native mm -hmm. app developers. Even if they can't build much, like I know you tried to build something and it was a little bit hard to do. Yeah, Even if do they so can't well. do much, they <laughs> might that might entice them to learn uh, Java, right. you know, so they can build actual native applications. So, so do you think Apple's going to strike back with HyperCard Part 2? I, I would bet that Apple tries to do something to make it easier for a novice user to make. I mean, think if they already do that, you know, they have their, uh, their one web page building. You and, know, and they have Automator. And they've automated, right? They have things sort of that, easy to use. <laughs> yeah, though that's not that user friendly, but it's you know it's better than what it would be to program the things yourself. Uh, okay, so the last thing is kind of the biggest one still that everyone's talking about: the iPhone antenna issue. So the the biggest part of this was Consumer Reports came out, you know, came out after their initial report. Their initial report said the antenna issue is not that big of a deal. Right. It's kind of the same thing as happens with many other phones. Um, and now they came out and basically said. No, don't disregard that report. We were wrong about that. We do not recommend that you buy the iPhone 4 because it is flawed, the antenna. Despite is flawed. the fact that it was the highest rated phone. Despite the fact that this is the highest rated smartphone I think they've ever tested. The second highest one was the iPhone 3 GS, and then mm -hmm. below that it's some Blackberries or whatnot. But yeah, so this is the best phone they've tested, but they cannot recommend you buy it because of the antenna flaw. So I know your stance on this is that eh, it's not that big of a deal. But what do you say to all those people? who are left-handed, and so they are dropping Well, calls. so here's the thing. Like, I just wrote about this right now, you know, like a few hours ago. I, I think I make a pretty good case that it is a deal. It is definitely a deal. It's a real thing. It's a legitimate problem. The thing is, I mean, as, as silly as it sounds, you know, Steve Jobs saying, just hold it differently, I think people might actually be doing that. You know, it's like, there is no, there aren't people massively turning these things in yet. If there's a huge problem with it, and if I can't use it, then everyone's going to turn it in. Doesn't matter how big of a fanboy you are. If you can't use the product, you're going to turn it in. Sure, but I think dropped calls have been such a problem on cell phones for years. I'm not sure if people would even necessarily notice. Maybe they'll notice yeah, if, sure. if, if it's like a huge issue if, and they can't connect calls at all, then they might notice. But if they're dropping, you know, 20% more calls, well, right. they won't notice. But and and I, that was like the initial reaction from a lot of people was that, well, I mean, is this really any worse than it has been? And you, right. it's hard to tell that. You know, Apple's software fix supposedly is going to knock down the bars on the thing so it's more accurately... It, it's just going to try to fool people with bigger bars. <laughs> right. But I mean, 
I, I honestly don't think, in my gut feeling is that this is not going to be as big as everyone is making it out to be right now. I do think that Apple acts, absolutely has to give away these bumpers. Mm -hmm. I have one on the phone right now. I, I believe that they have to give away those for free. I mean, they're $29. It's a complete ripoff. I don't know <laughs> how much these things cost to make. 20 cents, Tom. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I know that they've already instructed Apple Store employees that they're not to give out these bumpers for free. But I don't mm. see how they can get away with it. I mean, the issue is real, and software is not right. going to fix it. And I think you're absolutely, in your post, you say they're not going to do a recall. Totally agree with you. If Apple were to issue a recall, this would mar them for, you know, five years. People were referring to this yeah. every time they launch a product. Oh, maybe it's, they're going to recall it because there's some glitch. Right. Not going to happen. The PR experts supposedly are saying that there's going to be a recall. I say the only, that's an absolute last resort, obviously. Right. I mean, that would cost millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, sure. maybe billions And the dollars. reputation was just, I think that's the bigger issue there. Sure, sure. And I, the only way that that happens is if massive amount of people start turning in and stop buying the iPhone 4, and that just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Well, hopefully that bumper doesn't uglify your iPhone too much. It does. It, it does. <laughs> is which it? Is the, that's the biggest problem for me. I mean, I just think it looks so much better as, you know, intended to look without the stupid... You don't like it as much with the bumper? No, definitely not. <laughs> All right, well, I think that does it for this episode of OMJ, JK. OMG, JK. Nice job there. Yeah. <laughs> I practice this in the mirror all the time. Uh, so join us again next week, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon.